Hello, in uh, this video I'm going to uh, try and explain and demonstrate how to convert a 7 speed or potentially 6 speed uh, rear hub to a 8, 9 and 10 speed. Now for anyone that's a novice on the subject, I thought it'd be uh, a good point to separate the two. Uh, this video will be only talking about uh, Shimano rear hubs mainly and um, cassettes. Um, so quickly, uh, this is a, another type of hub uh, that accommodates a free wheel and uh, the free wheel is actually screwed on. Um, however, more modern day um, hubs have a cassette that slides onto uh, this uh, body right here and uh, it's then held down with a lock ring which is uh, screwed down. Something uh, else uh, I thought I'd mention, this is a free hub uh, body where the, the cassette actually goes on to um, and uh, this is one when it's uh, screwed on and so in this video what you're actually going to be doing is swapping out uh, the older free hub uh, which had a six or seven uh, speeded cassette sprocket cassette um, and we're going to get one that's slightly lengthier to put onto another one and we can uh, compare the two uh, free hub bodies. So this one's for uh, six or seven speed, although technically this is not for the six speed as the six speed had threading on it, but it's the same uh, length. And this is uh, the one for eight, nine and 10 speed. Uh, if you put them adjacent to each other, you'll see that the this one here is just slightly longer and that's essentially to accommodate the, uh, the larger width uh, cassette. Now I think for most people, uh, the situation will be this. You will have a free hub body with a 135 overlock nut dimension. So that will be the space in between the end of the nut, not the axle, and uh, the other end. Or in other words, the space in between your, your rear stays will be 135. And uh, what you will actually want to do is locate a donor hub with a free hub body um, that can accommodate an 8, 9 or 10 speed cassette and you will remove the axle you will then use the spacers from the donor hub and put them onto your old one so that you have the same uh, exact spacing and then you will unscrew the free hub body which is typically a number 10 and you will then screw it onto your old one which I will demonstrate later now, there are a few uh, particularities on that subject. F some free hub bodies do not have the same uh, spline patterns. Uh, so here's uh, one I've got uh, that's already open. Some of them are not the same and uh, I actually can demonstrate one of them not being entirely the same. So what you actually wanna do is try and find one that's uh, from the same period um, as the one that you've uh, got. So here is probably one of the easiest ways of doing it. The, um, this is, the, they're both STX uh, hubs and um, one was for seven speed and then it got updated to, a, uh, to an eight speed. And uh, here's one version of uh, the spline pattern for the uh, free hub body. Uh, this one in particular has uh, 12 teeth, I believe in total and uh, it's much larger, wider than uh, the other variety. If you're really lucky, you won't need to do any of this process. Your free hub body might already be able to accommodate an eight, nine, 10 speed cassette, although it might already have a seven speed installed on it. If you look behind your cassette, if it has a spacer like the one here that I'm showing, then it means that the uh, manufacturers just put a seven speed cassette onto a larger free hub body and they've put a spacer to be able to do that. So all you'll need to do is uh, remove the cassette and remove the spacer and you should be able to now accommodate a eight, nine, 10 speed cassette. Another particularity uh, on this uh, Shimano XT hub, for example, the free hub body uh, cannot be removed uh, using a number 10 Allen key wrench, you'll need a number 12, I believe. And uh, the axles are not at all the same. 
And uh, I think that's the reason why it's number 12 here, because the uh, once you remove uh, this first um, kind of nut, the uh, the axle is much larger. And so obviously the uh, the internal of the free hub body needs to be completely different. Uh, other situations. If you have a hub with a 130 uh, OLN, then uh, you will need to do the same procedure as before, but you also need to swap out the uh, the spindle. And uh, you will also probably need to, well, you will need to redish the wheel. Another situation um, for hubs with 126 OLN, I believe, uh, then I don't have one actually uh, to be able to demonstrate that. Uh, but what you will need to then do for that situation is I believe you'll need to cold set the uh, frame as long as it's made out of steel uh, to a 130 and uh, you will actually do the same procedure so you'll be able to unscrew normally the free hub body. You'll need to find the one with uh, the same spine patterns and then uh, after you will need to realign the wheel and you'll need to get the spindle probably from the 130 onto the 126 or your old 126. And uh, from personal experience, um, this isn't really worth doing uh, because you can typically find the uh, rear wheels quite cheaply, uh, at least second hand. Uh, but uh, I wouldn't do this unless I had uh, either spare parts or I could physically see the uh, the spline pattern of the free hub body to be able to confirm as uh, from what I'm aware there's probably about three or four different types of uh, of uh, spine patterns and you wouldn't want to end up with uh, the wrong one. So we're not going to go into the specifics of how to un disassemble a, a hub uh, but ultimately you want to undo the nuts on the non-drive side uh, and that's just to simply keep this in place uh, which makes it easier uh, later on to adjust. Okay, so once you've unscrewed that, remove the, the axle. This is um, so it's the longer free hub uh, side for the STX uh, hubs. Uh, now you can remove all the ball bearings. Okay, that's all of them. Now you need to remove the free hub. So it's going to be a number 10 and it'll actually you put it inside and uh, you should be able to unscrew it. Now I might have a very hard time removing this uh, since it's not in the wheel and I haven't got a lot to hold on. So I might have to put this in a vise, uh, but you'll have uh, have it laced up onto a wheel so it'll be easier. So this will be um, anti-clockwise when you're taking it off. Uh, I did have to put it in the vise to get that initial turn. But now it's uh, finally come off and what will come out is a fairly hollow uh, type of bolt. And now uh, you should be able to just remove that. And uh, interestingly, this one has some kind of spacer. The last one I take off didn't have that. Uh, you're very likely to find a lot of hair and string stuck in this. Right, I'm going to move forward and uh, undo the next ones. All right, that's another one. Now uh, we're going to swap them around. So the only real difference I can see is on the shorter uh, seven speed hub, the axle has a few more spaces here than on the, the longer one. Other than that, everything is exactly the same uh, measurements. If you look at the hubs, there are there's hardly any difference other than a bit of the finish maybe, but the uh, the rest is the same. The only difference really actually yeah, is on the hub, it seems like it's lower here where the uh, the free hub body seats on the, uh, f so for the eight, nine, 10 speed side. And on the seven uh, speed side, it's much more raised. Behind the uh, spacers were slightly different, same uh, thickness though. So I don't think that will change anything, whichever one you put. So yeah, ideally you get the same hubs and uh, you're going to have a very easy time swapping these out. In fact, you can put the these different axle from the longer hub, the longer free hub body 
uh, into the seven speed side. So anyway, let's just stick, stick this one in. And since there was a space, so we're gonna add on a spacer here again. If these are your hubs, obviously you want to give them a clean. So I'm going to repack the hubs with the ball bearings. And once I've done that, I'm going to put this one back in. So that's the uh, axle from the, the longer hub now that we're transferring onto this one. Right, well that's done. Um, I do feel like this video would be more complete if we put this onto a rear wheel or one that was laced up. So I have got an STX uh, 7 speed and I think we're going to do that. So I've already moved, removed the axle on uh, this hub. So we've just got to now take off the, the free hub body. Oh, that's hard. Smack it. There you go. Hear that? There you go. So this one's got no um, spacer behind it, funnily enough. The other one did. Just seems to change all the time. Now let's thread on the longer free hub body onto this one. Okay, so we've done that. Uh, I've given it a little bit of a clean. Uh, now I'm gonna stick the ball bearings and then we can put the ax in. That's uh, one side done. And now we just need to put the cone and the uh, spacers and the nut. I was going to put this onto the, uh, the frame that I've got here on the right. Um, but I figured that wasn't a very good way to check whether the uh, the hub was centered. So I actually got a tool to check that out. And um, what I figured found out was that no, it isn't. It looks like on the non-drive side, it would need to be pulled roughly about two millimeters, I'd say, for it to be centered. And so to do that, you would want to loosen the spokes on the... Uh, drive side and maybe tighten them up onto the other end uh, so that you shift essentially the uh, let's say the center of the the hub towards our left and we only need it two millimeters so I guess maybe beginning with half a turn on uh, undoing half a turn on one side and then tightening half a turn on the other to see uh, what happens and some more information Here's a 130 OLN uh, rear hub. And uh, so if you wanted to convert this to an 8, 9, 10 speed even, you would um, essentially remove the spacer which is situated right here. You would then need to adjust the uh, other lock nuts on the uh, drive side to shift the axle towards here to allow for more room to uh, put the new free hub that you're going to put on. You would then obviously need to uh, redish the wheel, which we've uh, just uh, now confirmed. Something else I noticed uh, that you could do to save a little bit of uh, room on uh, this axle is uh, swap out the lock nuts. I've noticed on this one they're a little bit thicker than on the uh, axle with the uh, 8 or 9, 10 speed. And I believe if you swapped them out on both sides, you'd probably gain about 2 millimeters. So this is another video, I guess, on, uh, on more information that's already available on uh, the internet. Um, 
Well, I hope this helped you in any case uh, to swap out your free uh, hub body with a larger one to convert to 8 or 9, 10 speed. So uh, thank you for listening. And if you have any suggestions or further information to add, uh, please do. Peace out.